At least the one good thing about me sitting on the ground in my room is that my bed sheets are currently um, dirty. <laughs> um, got yellow in them, so I guess it's got yellow and pink. Without really intending to, we have our lemons branding colours behind us. Our lemons branding colours are also currently in the sky. The sunset is beautiful. And the sunset is also early. <laughs> Way too early. Oh my god, yeah. Is this how we're going to start our second ever podcast? Is having a chat about it's getting dark too early? Is that really what we're going to be doing here? Like, okay. But, yes. Welcome back to the Love Our Lemons podcast. Ooh, I hate saying that. I think more of me is like, hey team, if you watch any of my content, I, it's like, hey team, it's usually what I say. But yeah, thank you for coming. Welcome, like welcome, yes, but thank you for coming back <laughs> and listening to Love Our Lemons podcast. It is surreal to say that, like that's just wild. I'm going to sit here so you can't see my washing in the background. This is a chair. Um, I was going to say if you're watching, but these are on, video is on Spotify. I had a friend going, I was listening to you and then and then I accidentally tapped something. All of a sudden you were there. I didn't realise that. I, you, I could see you on Spotify as well. I was like, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're here. Um, so I used to love this when I used to consume some other people's content who also post their stuff on YouTube. They'd like not edit it and just give you the full ball. So that is what we're going to be running with our YouTube videos. It is edited in the sense you don't have like the annoying shit, but me getting ready and stuff I'm just leaving in there because I used to love I used to love watching it particularly as someone who wanted to start their own podcast and stuff and also seeing how triggered everyone gets who runs their own podcast setting up and if someone's been a bit of a like I've got a clip from dad and I um, got no audio to it because hand in it push the start button but I'm like testing our <laughs> testing our sound in the audio we're about to start and I'm sitting and then dad goes to talk to me and I'm like, brother, you just talk to me whilst I'm trying to test my own audio and all I can hear is you. And he got the giggles. I was like, shut up. <laughs> but it's just like, oh yeah, that's one of those moments. And I have put numbers on the start of these. So when you search them, you can go number, um, can go number, but you can search by the number. It means I can refer back to them quite easily. Obviously we've got the blog. Obviously we haven't talked about that. So we do have the blog, which also makes it easy to refer back to, but I was looking trying to see who uses like episodes numbers at the start and who doesn't and Chris Williamson who if you haven't consumed consume he can no nah, I'm not gonna say that but he's just like a very intelligent impressive person he's just done an episode with Stephen Bartlett so if you want to like ever get around anyone and they are interviewed by Stephen Bartlett go see how the masters do it and you can learn all you need to know about that person and then decide if you want to consume the content more or not but I was like searching I was like okay I'll just go with all the big dogs to see if they use episode numbers at the start and Chris's latest one came up I don't even know if it's latest but the one that came up was five oh episode 505 and I was like fuck man can you imagine can you imagine being able to say like I have 505 podcasts to put into perspective I think most podcasts don't get past seven episodes and there's something like zero I think 1% gets past 12, and when you get to 50 episodes, you're within the 0.01% of podcasters in the world, because podcasts don't, they just, for whatever reason, they fizzle. So my goal is literally, and it's been one of the biggest lessons I've learned this week, of how detached I have been to releasing it, and the numbers when releasing it and I think that's got something to do with like it's been four to five years in the making and realizing how much of this is just for me and how much I just enjoy the process and everything up to releasing it and then once it's out into the world and I know people who have anything along the lines of this all that work that gets to that point once it's done it's done and you're like cool back to the drawing board I've got another episode to do and and the passion and the enjoyment I think for me which is a fucking blessing I'm now learning is coming from this and coming I love editing and and everything else in between there more so than the reaction and like I'm doing this to make an impact um but it's cool that the dopamine kick I get and and it has become more for me than anything else when if you asked me a few years ago I would have thought that it was the other way around and I would have thought that the reaction would be what would be driving me um don't get me wrong I fucking love hearing everyone's support I've screenshotted a whole lot and I've got a little wall that I'm going to be building with all 
the stuff. So I am like Nate Brockman, um, Nate Brockman, Ned Brockman, who ran, if you don't know, go listen to all his podcasts. He is so inspiring. Putting it out to the universe. Would love to have him on. We will have him on at one point. Um, he ran across Australia to raise money for the homeless, but he has done incredible shit. Like did something like so many marathons in a row and stuff like that. He's just, he's a beast. But he talked about how he had a fuck me wall. Fuck me wall. Fuck, fuck me wall. Oh my God. <laughs> a fuck you wall with just people who had said stuff or whatever. And he had a wall of it. And it was his motivation to go like, fuck you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a little wall of like just the support and stuff. Because for me, like there's a lot of easy people I could fuck. Like a fuck you wall would be easy to create and great. I think the way I work just praise kind of kicks me a bit deeper in the soul than resentment which I think just has a little bit to do with my life but uh, so that's what we're creating so I do I do really appreciate it and I can't wait like I do have moments like we have goals and stuff but we also don't I just have like when I'm journaling I have a lot of I do have like a journal um, I can't wait to see where I am and who I celebrate with and what celebration looks like for me when I get put in a playlist or when we hit a ranking or when I see it up on a sign or a billboard or it's shared or someone wearing clothing that we've created or st- or uh, we're going to be selling stickers soon, um, the stickers on someone or or I can't wait till we do our first campaign. I can't wait to but like where, where I'm going to be and who I'm going to be and who's going to be around me. That's what I journal more about than like getting to that goal. It's more like I know I'm going to get to that goal and I'm not focusing on what it's going to feel like to achieve that goal. I'm just really fascinated to be like, where am I going to be? And how is that going to look? That's kind of where we're at with that. So it's been a really interesting lesson this week, understanding that. But I guess where this all led to was the number we are focused on is getting to 40. Well, 40 was before I hit IFS. But, you know, getting over that 50, hitting that 50, that 50 episodes. And then hitting like the 505 like fucking Chris like that's that's the biggest goal and I've been playing with the the idea this year of like what happens if you there was no other goal except you just did a few things for 10 years and what would that look like in 10 years we have someone that I'll be getting on the podcast who's just awesome and she's been blogging for 10 years and when she shared it I was like holy fuck 10 years like can you imagine what you first blog to now in 10 years and you have 10 years to look back over and Recently this week I've been slowly getting back into my TikTok and I've been working on TikTok for about two to three years just you know I really enjoy sharing my stuff um, posting it all and um, but I started sharing my swims last year and I started sharing pre and post my swims little chats and last year was a huge year with probably the year of my biggest amount of monumental lemons we um, I had you know I started my own company then decided to walk away from my well put it on pause for a moment we decided to put our house on the market and we sold our home of you know 23 years we moved away from Queenstown which still to this day just absolutely sits heavy on my soul that's home to me and that was the only stable thing I've had in my whole entire life and having to say goodbye to a lot and that was a huge process but in between that um dad's Parkinson's got significantly worse he had to step away from work and then I had my Botox my vagina Botox and then I had another my fourth lap and there was an eight week gap in between those I had really severe reactions to both the anesthetics both those eight weeks then we got COVID smack bam in the middle of it It was just and then um, a three and a half year relationship ended I ended up in hospital three times due to my body just kind of crapping up uh, crapping out and just getting to the point of like uh, not consuming food and everything else in between and then um, about like a week later I um hopped on a one-way ticket overseas and we went through our huge journey of like being heartbroken and homesick and and traveling overseas with a one one-way plane ticket um, and I documented every fucking day pretty much throughout that whole journey pre and post these swims and I have about five to six videos of me just rambling about whatever is going on in life and it's been so beautiful now this year having those memories pop up and being able to see the growth or or feel that pain or just want to give myself a hug, or be so proud of myself, and it's it, and it always motivates me, um, and I'm like, wow, I'm so lucky that I, I unintentionally documented this stuff that I can now look back at on, like, such a huge week, they're all on TikTok if you want to consume them, but I know TikTok is really annoying, so I am posting elements of them on my reels, but there's just so much in content, 
shared like uh, three to five pieces of content a day, whether it's one minute or three minutes on TikTok's normal, but you know, sharing that anywhere else, you're going <laughs> to have no one following you because everyone's going to be like, we're so sick of your mug. Um, but we are sharing them on YouTube as well, slowly. Um, not the full ball. So if you want them all, they're on TikTok and you know, TikTok works in a great way where it'll just slam it in your face whenever it should be right. Um, depending on how you use the algorithm. But so this year it's been really playing with and detaching from like goal outcomes and kind of like successes in that area and just going, wow, what happens if I did this for 10 years? What happens if I just set the goal to podcast every week for 10 years and to write a fucking, um, if I got my shit together, write a journal, uh, like a journal entry every day for 10 years. I share them on my blog. But what happens if you swam, journal, yoga, podcast? But what happens if you did the other four every week? or every day, or whatever, but you did those things for 10 years, where, where will I be, I'll have kids and a family, and then, and then what will I be able to look back at over those 10 years, and whatever that is, it will be so much more than any of the things that you reach, and it's that whole, there's that whole um, story, quote, legend, whatever you want to say, where people use a whole lot of different analogies, but the one I heard first was, there was two groups, and they got told to create, like, vases, and one group, got told you create as many vases as you want like or as many vases as you can and the other group got told you have to make the most perfect vase and ironically it was the crew that just pumped out as many as they can they actually ended up creating the most perfect than the one that spent so much time only making like one trying to get it to per- perfect and you know you just and it's true and you know it's true and it's one of those things you hear and you're like oh fuck I know that is like that 10 year goal of just of just musing I've just been musing I'm like okay so what happens what would happen like I'm really intrigued just to see and to be able to at the end of it be able to say it and that's such a commitment and integrity that you have to yourself and the reason I started my swims was because I never had any integrity I never kept my word and now going down the journey and like two months or so I'm starting my process to getting diagnosed (laughs) for ADHD or ADD or whatever it will be that's really fascinating to look back on and understand and be able to pull apart how much of it's mean, how much of it's other stuff. But at the end of the day, the swims were like, I need something to prove to myself that I have integrity and I am committed and what I say I do and I want to be that person in people's life where they don't even have to worry or question. They just know whatever she says, it's 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 like solid, it's in stone. You can just trust. That's who I'd love to be. Um, I admire those hard workers I admire discipline like I think it's the most attractive thing in the world that's where the swims came from was I wanted something to be able to look at and go you can do what you say and you can hold and be committed to yourself and you do have integrity and this is your integrity and this is the foundation and how you do anything is how you do everything and you do this one thing it will seep through all areas of your life and it was that's where it started and the reason I did my swims was we started them in Lake Wakatipu. Um, it's a very cold lake. In winter, it's three to eight degrees. Um, and you've got snow on the hills that are going directly into the lake. Even in summer, it's a lake that you don't really swim and you just jump in and it takes your breath away and you, like, <gasps> and you hop out. Um, and it just kind of sm- started with a little, it wasn't meant to be a year. It was just how long we could go. And I got to 200 and something days in a row then we had our op and that broke the 200 and something dates but we did do predominantly apart from the stages overseas last year we swam in Vancouver and stuff we swam swam in the locks in um, Scotland but we didn't reach a full year which is like my biggest oh shit my biggest goal is not one year but 10 to consecutively be able to get all year of daily dips and when I say daily dips I'm not swimming um, I don't go paddle that's about my skill of swim sweep it has improved a lot but it was to go under three times. Um, you have to go under three times or you haven't gone under. There's been like two exceptions, both with running and standing on an eel and flying fish, which was the day that I released my first podcast on here. We ran into the sea in Sumner and there was literally flying fish, little flying fish flying out of the fucking sea. Um, and there's something a lot bigger than that fish punting my legs. And I just, you know that um, meme and it's got the really scary, lanky, on stick thing and it's holding the plastic bags and it was um it's running through the water and it's like tiptoeing 
<laughs> oh my god. But you know what I mean, like tiptoe through the window and it's and it's that meme. I know so I'll find it somewhere. That's what I would have looked like. Or like when you have a cat and they catch um they step on tin and they like ping. There's people eating fish and chips and I just was I'm good, I'm good, I'm good because I just put the podcast out. I've got um a vlog of it because I was going I've just done it and I like felt like far in the world and I was like cool the universe is going to meet me in the middle that's what happens when you take this action I'm going to have the best swim and I go home and um <laughs> like running through Sumner <laughs> through the water I'm like no it's fine it's fine it's fine and it's like up to my thighs I'm like it's fine there's fish flying out I'm like I'm good and every time something would punt me and then I just kind of felt what was punting me I was like this is so much bigger and I just like hopped like it would have been if someone watched me I would have been like that that creepy stick thing or like a cat hitting tin foil. I was like out of the water. I was like, fuck. And I was like running away. And um, then I tried and tried again. And then I was like, okay, in the shallows, there's like some surface there. And they were just like lying in the shallows. So I just like laid down, got up. And I, I, I was like covered in sand. Like I kid you not, all over my face. I was eating it. I was eating it for days. Like it was just, it was the most humbling experience for me. And then I really needed to pee. So then I had to run and go to the bathroom in this like dingy little bathroom and I was like busting and um I'm like sitting in bare feet in this like disgusting bathroom and then I stand up on the wooden bit to pull my sweatpants on and I look up and there's like all these big spiders you know me I'm like peak raptophobia and raptophobia is that the right word but just like I'm a pussy around spiders uh they're not my friends um and I was just like laughing and there's like the most attractive person I'd ever seen in my life standing next door to my car when all this was going on and I, I just um, I remember hopping back and I've got these videos of me laughing like it was one of those things the worse it got the more you laughed it's like here I am going if you take action the universe is going to meet you in the middle <laughs> and the universe humbled me that was how it met me in the middle it humbled, humbled my ass so significantly so my battery is flicking on here we're losing light and my battery on my um, laptop's disappeared I've just had like a 21 minute chat to you guys oh this episode was meant to be my first guest episode for my second episode. However, the guest episode is incredible. It's with more our family friend. And I literally say about 120 to 180 wows. I'm not kidding you. I have a wow count. I will upload it preview this episode because it's just fucking ridiculous. But that summarizes beautifully what the conversation was all about mental health like Mort is just incredible he is a Vietnam veteran he is <laughs> world class was a world class psychologist psychiatrist I need to get this right you can see in the moment when I sit down with him I go to say what he is and you can see my life flash before my eyes realizing I can't say this word <laughs> he's incredible however I really wanted to give him justice and I didn't think just slamming him out without a good run up and giving you guys some like socials on it and just being able to promote it was the right thing to do so I'm recording the rest of this on my phone this episode just ended because my everything died. Like, everything died. But on a phone, everything died. There's no value in this episode at all. It's just a little chit-chat. We are just pumping it up so we can have a little extra time ensuring that the following episode is all spick and span. Thank you for listening if you're listening. I assure you that this is not what Love Our Lemons podcast is going to be, but we thought we might as well share a little bonus episode of just me sitting on the ground in my room in golden hour talking shit, essentially. Um, I'm going to roll the intro for the outro, and I will see you next week for Mort's episode. I am excited for that. And once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for choosing to tune into Love Our Lemons. Love Our Lemons is conversations where we raise awareness around the lemons life throws our way and how you can create love from these lemons. My mission is to positively change and challenge every aspect I can for future generations and all living things, including the planet itself. Starting with providing an environment for conversations about topics people struggle to whisper, let alone share publicly. I'm lifting up the carpet from what we've swept all this bullshit under. Lemons is about ensuring we can limit the amount of shit that people have to go through. And if they do have to go through it, they don't have to go through it alone. Whether it be charities to donate to, events to participate or support in, or merely a dialogue you can incorporate in your day-to-day -day use that makes someone feel seen and supported and heard where they once wanted of before, we want to provide this for you. I don't want people to walk away from these conversations feeling defeated. 
not knowing where to go or what to do and overwhelmed. I want to provide a space where you walk away with tools, actions, dialogue. We're sharing ours and many others climb up the mountain so it can be written in stone and shared through generations. So if I haven't said this yet, hey, I'm Han. I'm just a girl on a mission to change the world. And as cliche and cheesy as it may sound, I won't ask you to go easy on me, more so to join me, whether it be a minute, 10, or every episode. This is not a gift from me to you, but a gift from you to me, sharing your journeys, your battles, your scars, your survival guides. And to little hand, listening, believing, trusting, and choosing to stay, thank you. This is for you, from me.